All right, we're working in intermediate algebra. This is section 4.4, starts on page 156. The topic is simplifying complex fractions. All right, example one, and you can see here, this is what we call a complex fraction because there are fractions inside of a big fraction. So here's a big fraction bar. The numerator has addition of fractions. The denominator has a subtraction of fractions. So this is what we call a complex fraction. There are actually two ways to simplify this. You can look at this as a big division and rewrite this ho horizontally as 1 third plus 1 over m divided by 5 6 minus 3 over m and then do common denominators, keep it, change it, flip it. It's a long way to do it, but it does work. I'm going to go with a shorter route. Um, if you know the longer way and you're getting the correct answer, it's perfectly fine to do it that way. I'm not going to show it. I'm going to show the shorter way. The shorter way involves looking at these denominators. I'm going to circle them all here. Looking at these denominators, all the denominators that are involved, and finding the least common denominator. And we practiced that on the last video. So if you need a review of how to find the least common denominator, go to the previous video. The denominators are 3, m, 6, m. Well, the least common denominator for 3 and 6 is 6. So we're going to start with a 6. And of course, you would have to add on these m's, or one an, an m, to cover each of those lists. So the common denominator is 6m. We're not going to change all these denominators. Instead, we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 6m. And I'm going to use 6m over 1 because these are fractions. And this is just a distribute. Looks a little odd right now. So we're going to write it underneath here. What we have here is 6m over 1 times 1 third. So that's how I'm going to write this. 6m over 1 times 1 third plus 6m over 1 times 1 over m. And that's what this numerator turns out to be. Um, now we're going to, let's just scroll up a little bit, simplify this. Um, this becomes 6m top times top, bottom times bottom, over 3. Which reduces, because the 6 and the 3 reduce, to make 2m. Then we have a plus sign. This becomes 6m over m, and those m's reduce. So the numerator becomes 2m plus 6. I'm going to write that over here. And then we're going to do the denominator. Okay, let's uh, do the denominator in green so we don't get confused. Okay, so the denominator becomes 6m over 1 times 5 over 6 minus 6m over 1 times 3 over m. And that's coming from distributing this times this and this times this. And then we're going to simplify it. Alright, so this becomes, oops, 30m, 6m times 5 over 6, which reduces to make 5m. And this becomes 18m over m, which reduces to make 18. And so this is the denominator. We're going to carry that up here, 5m minus 18. This is your final answer. The only thing you need to make sure you check for is reducing. There is a GCF here, and you could factor out a 2. But there is no GCF here, so that 2 is not going to have anything to reduce with anyway. So it's always nice to check. This is your final answer for example 1. All right, example 2, still on page 156. It says 1 minus 25 over n squared over 1 over n plus 5 over n squared. And we're going to start the same way. We're going to look at the denominators. There's only 3 this time because there's no denominator here, or in other words, the denominator is 1. All right, the least common multiple for these denominators would be n squared. 
And again, if you need help uh, figuring that out, go ahead and review the previous video for section 4.3. Uh, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by n squared. And we'll use n squared over 1 because they're fractions. And that's just going to be distribute. Okay, so we'll pull the numerator down here. When I multiply n squared over 1 times 1, I just get n squared because anything times 1 is the same thing minus when I multiply times this term, this will be top, top times top, bottom times bottom, I'm going to get 25n squared over n squared. And of course those n squareds cancel. So this, this numerator turns out to be n squared minus 25. That's the numerator. Okay, the denominator we'll do in red. When I multiply this times this, I'm going to have n squared over n. Which reduces because n squared is just n times n. And one of those n's will reduce. So this reduces to just make n. And then when I multiply here times here, this is distribute, I'm going to have 5n squared over n squared. That's a plus sign. And of course those n squareds reduce. So this turns out to be n plus 5. Now, um, I hope you're noticing, actually I should not have done that. I hope you're noticing that this n squared minus 25 is the difference of squares. So it will factor. So we're going to carry this down. Let's go down here n squared minus 25 is n plus 5 times n minus 5. And in the denominator, I still have n plus 5. These binomials match, so they reduce. So the final answer turns out to be n minus 5. from here. So it turns out whenever after you've done the multiplication and the reducing you need to make sure you factor or at least look at the factoring to see if it's logical and see if anything will reduce off. So this that's how we ended up with just this n plus 5. Okay example 3 is on page 157. It says 3x plus 5 over 1 over x plus 1 over x squared. Uh, when we look at the denominators, we see these two, and there are no denominators up here in the top because these, there's, there's no fractions here. So we only need to find the common denominator for this. The common denominator for x and x squared is x squared. So we will multiply the bottom times x squared over 1, but remember with fractions, whatever you do to the bottom, you also have to do to the top. So even though there are no fractions to clear out on the top, we're still going to multiply times x squared. And notice this time on the top, I'm not going to use x squared over 1 because there are no fractions. x squared over 1 is useful with the fractions so that you have a numerator and a denominator. But if there are no denominators, you don't need to put it over 1. So this will just distribute here and will turn out to be 3x cubed plus 5x squared in the numerator over what's going to happen in the denominator. Top times top, bottom times bottom gives us x squared over x plus x squared over x squared. And then when we get ready to reduce, remember x squared is x times x. So one of those x's will reduce. So this just becomes an x. And x squared over x squared, they both reduce, but they don't reduce to make 0. They reduce to make 1. Whenever the numerator and the denominator are the same, your fraction reduces to 1. So this is what the denominator turns out to be, x plus 1. Now, this numerator does factor. You could take out a GCF. So maybe we'll try that to see if anything is going to reduce. The GCF is x squared. 
So we end up with 3x plus 5. I don't know if you guys noticed, but that's the same thing we started with up here. x squared times 3x plus 5. But that is the factored form. The denominator is still x plus 1. And it doesn't look like anything is going to reduce. Because this x squared cannot reduce with this x. Remember, because this is a term. And only binomials reduce with identical binomials. These binomials don't match, so they're not going to reduce. So this is your final answer. And actually, uh, most teachers would be okay with this answer back here. I like factored form. It shows me that you thought about, oh, I need to factor this to see if anything will reduce. But if you gave me this answer, you would still get full credit. All right, example four is on page 158. It says 7 over x plus 3 over 7 over x. So again, looking for the common denominator. Uh, both these denominators are the same, so the common denominator is x. We'll multiply the top and the bottom by x over 1, using the over 1 because there are fractions involved. Uh, this numerator is going to turn out to be 7x over x plus, all right, what happens here when I multiply times a 3? Remember, this is 3 over 1. You might want to write it over here as 3 over 1. Then when you multiply this, you can see that this is 3x over 1, which is just 3x. So this turns into 7, because those x's reduce, plus 3x. When we do the denominator, we're just going to get 7x over x, top times top, bottom times bottom and those x's reduce, so we just end up with 7. This is, this is looking pretty good here, uh, but remember, these 7's do not reduce because this one is part of a binomial. You can't reduce a term. So these 7's do not reduce. The only way this would reduce is if something will factor. Uh, there is no GCF here. This is already prime, so there are no factors, and this is totally complete. Alright, that's it for section 4.4. Bring your questions back to class with you. I'll see you there.